Greetings Earthlings, today we're looking at a collaboration between Sennheiser and Apogee. So today we're looking at this guy, the Sennheiser Hand Mic Digital, which is compatible with Mac, Windows, and iOS. If you do want to pick this guy up, it will set you back around $260. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for the majority of this review, I have the microphone connected directly to my Mac with the input gain set at 25%. Not going to do any post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. Did I get it? I got it. <laughs> I got it. Yes. First up, you do obviously get the microphone. You get a really bad stand as it is just a slab of metal. You get a microphone clip, a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a 2 meter lightning and 2 meter USB cable, a padded storage pouch, and you get some documentation. As far as the build quality, this microphone does feel pretty nice as it should given the price tag. It does have an all metal body as well as a metal grill, which doesn't have much give to it. It has a decent amount of weight to it as well. There is an LED light on the side of the microphone. On the bottom of the microphone, there is a micro USB port with these special connectors attached to the cable. And unfortunately, there is no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this thing anywhere. Now, as far as the specs, this thing has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 40 hertz to 16 kilohertz, a sensitivity of negative 56 to negative 19 decibels, a noise level of negative 96 dBA to negative 74 dBA, a max SPL of 134 decibels to 99 decibels, a bit depth of 16 or 24 bit, and a sample rate of 44.1 up to 96 kilohertz. Now I'm spinning around the Sennheiser hand mic digital to show you the off axis rejection and coloration. We will go ahead and continue around to the rear of the microphone, show you how it sounds from there. We will continue around to the second 90 degree angle and we will rotate and end at the front. Now I'm typing on a keyboard with Cherry MX Blues to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up right on top of the microphone to show you the proximity effect. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Now let's test the plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm passing the microphone back and forth between my hands to show you how it does with handling noise. Now we're checking the latency for the hand mic digital with the sample rate set at 44.1 kilohertz with an IO buffer size of 64 samples. We're at 8.5 milliseconds round trip or 2.2 milliseconds output. Bump up to 128. We're at 11.5 milliseconds round trip or 3.7 milliseconds output. And jump up to 256 samples, 17.2 milliseconds round trip or 6.666 milliseconds output. Now we're looking at the latency with the sample rate set at 96 kilohertz. At an I.O. buffer size of 64 samples, we have 6 milliseconds round trip or 1 millisecond output. Up to 128, we're at 7.3 milliseconds round trip or 1.6 milliseconds output. Jump to 256, 10 milliseconds round trip or 3 milliseconds output. Now I have my sound preferences open and my gain is set at 25%. I'll drop this to zero and slowly increase it so you can hear what kind of noise is generated by the Apogee preamp and A to D converter. 25 25%. 50%. percent 75% and 100%. Okay, now I'm recording the Sennheiser hand mic digital into my iPhone 10 directly. I am recording this audio in the 
Apogee Meta Recorder app at 24 bit 48 kilohertz. Let me go ahead and jump over to the Apogee Maestro app. And as you can see, we have no processing turned on and my gain is at 18 decibels. We'll jump into processing. And now I've turned on the overload limiter and this is how it's sounding. This is going to act just like a limiter. I'll turn that off now. Now I have turned on the hiss reducer. I am not quite sure what this is. I am assuming it is a low pass filter or maybe a de-esser, but this is how it sounds with that enabled. Went ahead and turned that off. And now I have enabled the rumble reducer, which is going to be a high pass filter or a low cut filter. And this is how it sounds. Now it's nearly Halloween time I think that you will lose your mind Given what I paid for this microphone, I really did want to love it, but unfortunately it left me a little bit underwhelmed. First up, in terms of pros, this microphone is compatible with iOS, Windows, and Mac, which is awesome. It also has a really nice build quality, and according to Alan Tepper over at Pro Video Coalition, that overdrive eliminator in the iOS app actually activates a hardware limiter in this microphone, which is just insane to see. But then in terms of cons, this microphone is just very expensive. The preamps weren't as quiet as I was expecting given that they are from Apogee and there's no zero latency monitoring. Although knowing what Apogee charges for their headphone DAC amp combo thing, I'm actually kind of glad that it wasn't included because this microphone would have doubled in price. Now, as far as my overall thoughts on the electric guitar, I was not impressed at all. And that's because I set the microphone up so it was nowhere near clipping. My amp is set at 1.5, so I am not overdriving the SPL. But when you listen to that, it sounds like I am overdriving the microphone. So I was not impressed with this for loud sound sources at all. Then on acoustic, it does have a full low end, but it sounds a bit claustrophobic, and that's probably because it only extends up to 16 kilohertz, so it doesn't have a full air frequency range to let the instrument breathe. For singing, I also wasn't terribly impressed because it had a somewhat gritty tone, almost like it was overboosted in the treble frequencies. And then for spoken word, it's not my personal favorite tone for a microphone, but it does offer a lot of clarity, which is good for spoken word because it makes it much more easy to understand what's being said. But now, would I recommend this microphone? Well, if you're looking for a super compact recording kit to take on the road while you're traveling and record to your iOS device, and you like the tone of the Sennheiser E935, which is what I think this is just with some different internals, then sure, I think it's a fine microphone and you will get by. Also, if you did want to connect to this mic direct to your iPhone and record some convention coverage or an interview or anything like that, I do think this would be a very straightforward and very simple solution. But on the other hand, it is a $260 microphone and I do think it has quite a few shortcomings. I think if somebody's willing to have a few more pieces of gear on the road, they would be much better served with something like the iRig Pre-HD, which is an iOS XLR interface, which has zero latency monitoring, and then you could just pick up whatever microphone you want. I think that would be a better solution for a lot of people. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos? There's a couple over there, and you can also subscribe beneath the video and click that bell button. You can hang out in the Discord server. I'll throw a link in the description, and I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye.